So this is the interior design style that I have been waiting for. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the brutalist style of interior design and what makes it so special and not brutal. I think it's pretty great. I've also put together a brutalist color palette to tie everything together that we'll talk about in the second half of this video. So brutalist design really originated or came to prominence in the middle of the 20th century. And what it does is it emphasizes raw, this rule and blocky monolithic shapes, usually cast from concrete specifically. It has a lot of dramatic eye-catching qualities. And what it does is it turns out to be a really unique design style that has become popular once again in the last decade or so. I find that people tend to draw comparisons between it and industrial design, which I do get because there is kind of a brutalist quality in both of them. But some key characteristics of brutalist interiors are things like exposed concrete walls, even floors and ceilings, and most notably the concrete is usually left raw and unfinished. I mean, if you were to do anything, maybe a clear coat on top, but a kind of a low sheen. You don't want anything too shiny or glossy or unnatural looking. Also, there tends to be a lot of modern and angular geometric shapes. So not a ton of nice curvage or rounded edges. We're seeing lots of rectangles, tons of sharp lines and 90 degree right angles. In terms of furniture and accessories and all that, I would say, generally speaking, brutalism can be deemed as a form of minimalism. So not a ton of extra things that aren't necessary. We're also talking about materials like metal and wood, big chunky tables, very sparse decor overall. So not a ton of fluff, both literally and figuratively. I think the goal with brutalism is to make it feel like you're kind of living in a bunker, which doesn't sound too comfortable when you ask me. But the thing is, it's meant to convey strength and kind of the sense of permanence to your design. If you got concrete walls, floors, and ceilings, you better like that. You're pretty committed to that design style because a coat of paint isn't really gonna change much, to be honest. Kind of like industrial, which is more so what I have in this studio. Achieving a brutalist design in your home is a lot easier for some people because if you're living in a place like a hard loft or an unfinished basement, let's say, then what's already there can sort of lend itself to that design style. But if you're starting with a more, let's say, traditional canvas or just a regular old drywall house, you can still have a brutalist inspired interior by focusing on the use of concrete accessories, minimalist furniture with some metal accents. It also really helps if you have tons of natural light coming in to work with in the form of larger windows that can accentuate any textural components from that concrete that you should be using. You can go with geometric wall art, metallic light fixtures, even things like concrete planters rather than your good old terracotta pots that you're probably used to using. So even though it might not be possible for you to go like full brutalist, you can have some brutal aspects of your interior design. So being the paint people, I'm giving you five paint colors that kind of give you an idea of what a brutalist palette might look like. And just to let you know, my color buffs out there, people that like the big, bold, vibrant choices, industrial has a little bit more room for real color than brutalism in my mind. So this palette that I'm giving you is definitely more neutral leaning. Starting with Stamped Concrete by Sherwin-Williams. And I mean, you gotta start with this color. It's about concrete. That is one of the main fundamental aspects of brutalism is the use of concrete. So you might as well go with a color that is named after it. I will say this is more of a darker gray. It's LRV is 35. So that's kind of on the low end of mid-tones. Not necessarily the main color of the palette, I would say. We'll get to that next. But what you do have here is a pretty rich, cooler leaning gray that I think is a great place to start. The next color in this palette is Silver Plate. And this one is a true mid-tone. It's at around a 53 LRV, so it has enough depth to be noticed, but it's not going to be quite as dark as that concrete color we just talked about. What's great about Silver Plate is, to me, it looks a little more neutral than stamped concrete. A little less cool, a little more concrete-y to me. <laughs> to be honest. So I think of all the colors in this palette, this is kind of your base neutral. This is the one that you can paint the main areas of your brutalist space with. And then the other colors are a little more supportive. Skyline Steel is number three. And this is a color that's almost identical in lightness to silver plate. But what it gives you is more of a metallic feel, a little more warmth as well. So there's a touch of brown being mixed in. There's also almost a hint of 
this gold, this almost rosy gold mixed in. So we're just veering off the cool gray bandwagon a little bit, but still being neutral enough where they're gonna work together really nicely. Essentially, it's a warmer alternative to the color we just talked about. So you kind of have two options within the same wheelhouse. Color number four is cobble brown. And this is the darkest color on this list. You might have expected something like black or slate gray, but to me, that feels a little more industrial, those sort of wrought iron colors. I feel like brutalism is very much about lighter concrete, a gray sort of feel rather than those dramatic blacks. But cobble brown represents the wood, the darker, more weathered woods that you might encounter in brutalism. But you can also have it as a paint color for something a little more different. And then to finish up, we do have an off-white and I just had this impulse to go a little bit warmer. I think the other colors that stamped concrete look, the brutalism, interior design as a whole can feel a bit too depersonalized and cold. And I wanted to add creamy as my fifth color. Creamy, so creamy beige. It's still passive enough that it's not going to look like a yellow or anything like that. It is a very soft, accessible warmth. That's not gonna pull too much focus, but it just will add that subconscious sort of pleasantry that maybe <laughs> brutalism needs. But as you can see, this palette right over here, pretty monochromatic, fairly grayscale, but I did add a little bit of color, a little bit of hue to add some variety to your space. So you can make it just the way that you want to. This is another design style that you should check out before you commit to anything because there are a lot of ways you can do this interior decorating thing.